Hey, welcome back to Ask the Professor with Terry Cooper, the Texas RV Professor. I'm Dave Dufour here at RV Newsnet, RVNN.TV. And we're talking about solar and we're talking about wind power today. Uh, and uh, while you might not think that you can actually have wind power on an RV, you can, right? Because... Uh, right. I don't know, you go down the road with a big propeller on top and you're just gathering that electricity, oh. right? No, no, let's not go that route. <laughs> We're looking at <laughs> a disaster. <laughs> oh, that would be a disaster. It would probably be kind of noisy too, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, say that it again? Would it would probably be kind of noisy too, wouldn't it? It as, would be. If you're driving you anyway. What, you want to hear, because those blades do make noise when they're whirling, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. uh, imagine those things turning 60 or 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear, that's disaster waiting to happen. There you go. So. Yeah, it would be. It would be. Um, so um, what is, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to, I somehow have gotten myself, there we go. Got to get back to the slides here. We, um, uh, what, so wind wind power is actually viable for RVs, though, and 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 I guess my question is, how does that work? Well, quite honestly, it's working on the same principle as we see these huge wind turbines out in the you know in North Texas, out towards Las Vegas, all those areas are out along the west coast or along mm -hmm. the coastlines. But basically, they were just using the wind to turn this, these big old props on these generators, uh -huh. and these generators make electricity. Well, scale it down to a small unit that we're going to put on an RV. Now, we RVers, unfortunately, we're not always real creative in what we do, mm -hmm. but what they've done is they borrowed this technology from the, uh, from the sailing folks. Oh, so I imagine see. Imagine some guy out there who's sailing. This is how he gets his, how he gets his electricity. Okay. So, okay. So this has been used on, on sailboats as well then. Oh, absolutely, for years and okay. years. I mean, uh, you know, yes, they're going to have solar panels, but what happens is is that usually the solar panels, the PV panels, do real well in the daytime, mm -hmm. but what happens when the sun goes down? Well, believe it or not, with the wind currents, the way they are and the way the, the heat rises, right. it creates enough turbine, enough movement to cause those turbines to move, to cause those blades to move, and we generate power at night right. to continually feed our batteries. Now and then and now is the is the power here that you're talking about you got a slide here which talks about this being uh, that a generator that you use is only 12 to 14 percent efficient and mm -hmm, then that's correct. Uh, and so the but the efficiency on wind power is is I guess it's basically a hundred percent isn't it essentially well you you have some mechanical losses because of bearings and things like mm -hmm. that so right. it's not going to be a hundred percent but what happens is it's free you're not that's having to right. buy petroleum to put in it <laughs> right so. As long as you've got wind moving, you've got power coming. That's right. So it's not a and it's, so it's not ideal in climates where you don't have a lot of wind or where you're in deep woods or something like that, right? Exactly. And as a matter of fact, that's our drawbacks that we have is that not all environments, not all areas have good wind uh, characteristics. Okay. Um, I I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with the slides here, but there we go. Uh, the the so the the. the 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 one thing about this now this generates DC power again right exactly it generates the same power that the solar panels generate right and the thing is that now you you can't really just like you know if the winds blow and plug something into it it really works more in conjunction with your batteries correct exactly I mean it, it, like we've always talked about before you know a, a battery is the piggy bank mm -hmm. we're just going to use it as a storage facility so what we're going to do is we're going to use these solar panels we're going to use these wind turbines mm -hmm. to generate DC voltage to feed the battery right and then from there we're going to dip out what we need okay and so this goes into your essentially it works with your your deep cycle battery exactly exactly okay. wow dave you really have been paying yes attention. you're right you know what else i remember too is that 80 percent of the things that go wrong on your rv you can fix yourself if somebody would just show you how <laughs> <laughs> but back to wind power <laughs> yeah but i so you think about that 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 uh that deep cycle battery that that's what you you have this this uh, wind turbine going during the day when you're out, you know, enjoying yourself outside when you're not using the power. That's really kind of the idea. Is am I that's, am I tracking correctly here? That's exactly right. So yeah, it's just storing that up in there. Um, let's see, I've got another slide here. There we go. So here, here's a we've got some uh, a slide here that shows kind of a typical mounting. How how do you set these up? Obviously, you don't have them up when you're traveling down the road because that's obviously a problem. No. Can you imagine snagging some overpass with that thing? Oh, yeah. Well, I can imagine ruining the turbine pretty fast. 
Well, <laughs> you know, the expense would be great, let me just say. <laughs> but basically, a lot of folks, believe it or not, will take that wind generator and they have an attachment that hooks into the receiver for their, uh, their trailer tow. Right. So let's say you have a motor home. Right. Well, you have that little receiver built into the unit, and so you just couple it up in there. And so the generator sticks up above your rig. Right. Now, if you've got a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, I've seen folks that'll even have a standalone platform for it to plug into. So gotcha. Just really kind of depends on what you want to do with it and how you operate it. Now, do you do you have horror stories to tell about people who forgot to take these down and before they headed down the road and that kind of stuff? Or because that's the, that's been the thing about a lot of the uh, TV antennas until some more recent types that don't require that uh, raise and lower thing. You know, believe it or not, maybe because these generators and these wind turbines are so popular and probably such a unique thing when they come into a campground, mm -hmm. believe it or not, a lot of people do not forget about it. They seem to remember that when they forget even the simple things like, you say, the bat wing antenna on the roof. Okay, so, but it's basically something on a pole, and then what do you, you take that, you are they telescoping or do they you just bring them down and you have to put them inside the RV while you're traveling, or what do you do with them? You're going to see all types of different manufacturers. Some of them have poles that couple together. Some that have telescoping. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen it where you, you know, three or four bolts and you uncouple the mast, you know, maybe in three right. or four sections. And then, like you said, then you stow it in, in your rig. Right. The big thing is, is that you've got to protect that, that generator housing, that where that generator motor is, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. and the propellers, or the props, as we call them. Right. And protect them, because that's, you know, that is the workhorse right there. And that's the efficiency is in the shape of that of that propeller, I would assume. Absolutely. Um, and they, uh, this package, they run about a thousand dollars for the for a package to do this. Typically, what you'll see is a 400 watt, which is basically you know equivalent to about two solar panels, and you know that'll run you about a, a grand on that. Mm -hmm. And you'll see those because you can buy those at pretty much any of the RV stores. Uh, order them online I, you know there's another company online that I was reading about the other day RV solar and gotcha. you know they were all pushing it and this is this is a pretty good number but here again you're gonna have to have a battery stack to tie into just like you do your solar panels okay well the um, is now if I if you go if, if someone were to go out and purchase this package is this something that they want to try to install themselves or is this something that they should have someone else do is this what is this part of that 80 percent of stuff you can do yourself or not in terms of setting this up it sure is. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I won't say it's foolproof, but it, it's pretty. It's pretty simple, and the diagrams are pretty straightforward. Okay. I mean, you know, everything's pretty well prepackaged for you. Okay, so you, you you just have to have now. In addition to the propeller, uh, the well, the the generator assembly, which is the the turbine and the, and the and the housing and all that. Mm -hmm. What else is there besides that? And then and, and, and at the other end of that, is there some additional electronics? There is. What they're going to do is they're going to come off of that housing and come down with a cable. Right. And they're going to tie that cable into a voltage regulator. So that way, if the thing's really humming, it's going to not overcharge the batteries. Gotcha. If it's not moving fast enough, then we don't want to discharge our batteries and run power up to that generator. Right. Okay. So I see. It's kind of like trying to air up a tire, you know, on your vehicle. Right. If you're not pushing enough air into that that tire, well, it's pretty soon you're going to be letting air out. Gotcha. Okay, because there's there's voltage wanting to come the other way. Is that kind exactly. of the analogy? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Well, we are going to talk next. I think about uh, putting about combining both solar and wind. Am I correct about that? That's right. And you can use both. So we're going to find out how when we come back on Ask the Professor. So don't go away. The Texas RV Professor wants to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to professor at rvnn.tv. If you have a specific problem, it really helps if you can send a photo as well. That makes it easier for Terry to diagnose your issue. You can also leave a voicemail for Terry Cooper at 877-578-RVNN, extension 708. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned.
Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.